Hi everybody, my name is Michelle and I'm Mama Loves You GB here on FlossTube, but also over on Instagram and Etsy as well. Welcome to the Sunday Morning Briefing. It is the 3rd of September. We are back at school, or well, certainly I'm back at school, and it was actually lovely to go back to school and to see all my colleagues. And I, I do mean that. As that's not tongue-in-cheek or anything, it was really, really lovely. I'm that sort of person who I think I would love to be self-employed, but when left to my own devices... I don't think I would be a very good self-employed person at all. I think I'd end up working like three or four hours a week and then think I've worked really hard. I need that kind of structure in my day. And if I don't have it, then things that happen like over the summer holidays when Ness and I binged watch two series of Is It Cake um, would probably happen more frequently. So, um, so yeah, I'm glad to be back. I am glad to be back. What have I been up to this week? Well, I haven't done as much stitching. I've done quite a lot of charting, especially getting forward to um, Sampler September and getting those sampler models that I wanted to stitch underway. I've also done a little bit of framing, so I'll show you one of those today. Um, so, and I've also been stitching a model. I've designed my first uh, perforated paper piece, and so I've been stitching the model for that one. That's for a freebie that's coming up um in a couple of months time for a specific event so i don't think you'll see that for a little while i'll show it to you after the event but um as to when it would become available i don't know we'll have to wait and see so what have i been stitching on mainly just the cricket collection we haven't got an earthquake i'm just waiting for the camera tripod to stop shaking there we go i just had a message come up and it was it wasn't clearing itself so it was just all i could look at so there we go cricket collection winter and I have got quite far with this so I've got all my letters in and I'm just starting work on the kind of decoration of each of the letters Now, I just wanted to remind you about a website that I've used this week, particularly on this project. It's called CodyHoover.com. I'll link it down below. And basically what it allows you to do is to type in a DMC number for something that you haven't got, for example. And then it will give you the six closest DMCs and it will show them side by side. So you'll be able to see. So, for example, this T, it required 520 and I didn't have any 520. So what I did was put 5520 into this into this website and it came up with the suggestions and I was able to choose something that I had so I can't remember offhand it's either 501 or 502 that one because that's either 501 or 50 no 502 or 503 so it's one closest to that one so yeah I didn't have the kind of bluey gray the slaty gray I had a greeny gray so looks absolutely fine and I've done it a couple of times on here as well because I didn't have this particular purple so I popped it into the the website and it came up with some choices and then I just picked the one that I had let's use that stash up now I've been able to get as far as I have thanks to um Charlie Charlie Feathers who messaged me um, after she'd seen my in, in not Instagram my YouTube last week and said that she had a reel of the blending filament that I needed for the uh, this. So you blend acrylic with white and it gives it a little bit of sparkle. Um, and I didn't have that. So I was going to buy some, but she messaged me. She said she'd got one that she found in a package of stuff in a charity shop. Um, and she prefers to use um, oh, what got treasure braid. So she said she would send it to me and she sent me this lovely card as well. So she's got a website, not a website. I'm mixing my social medias today she's got a youtube channel a floss tube channel as well so i'll link that down below so go and check her out but thank you so much for that it really helped me to kind of get on and get things spaced so that i could start putting in all of those snowflakes and the big snowman now i'm hoping to get this finished but it is sampler september and i haven't put a needle and thread in a sampler as of yet and it's the third of september so that may have to go just on the sideline. I'm going to pop that down there. So what actually have I been doing? That is a very good question. I have charted 
this. Now you might remember this, it was in a hideous frame. I've taken it out of said hideous frame and it was actually backed. Um, it was somewhat manky, but it's okay. It's airing nicely. Um, whether she'll end up back in a frame or just stay, stay loose, I don't know. But I have charted this one to my satisfaction to try and get the difference between the thick thread and the thin thread that creates that beautiful lace border, which is what drew me to Charlotte Jekyll in the first place. Now, Charlotte Jekyll is going to be a black sampler Novembler. Novembler? I can't talk today. This is already my second go at filming this because the first one didn't, I didn't start the camera. <sighs> Amateurs. I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> oh, gin. Somebody bring me some gin. It can't get any worse. So I have charted this, ready to stitch this in, no um, in September, ready for November. I hope you know what I'm talking about. So I have charted that. I have finished charting my Norfolk as well. So that's ready to go. Although I haven't put a stitch in her yet. Most of my time... Well, actually, no, that's not true. Most uh, she this one went in super easily. Some of my time was spent framing, and I had ordered a couple of picture frames from Picture Frame Express, and I've ordered from them before, and it seemed to take longer to come. I ordered it on the Friday before the bank holiday weekend, and they were delivered on Wednesday, and I literally had this one in the frame within an hour of her of the frame arriving um, and it went in really really super simple sometimes it's horrendous it's just never straight it doesn't look right it's awful this went in super quickly super nicely so this is my noel sampler by brenda gervais with thine and thread which i stitched in january i think this is 32 count i think it's paperbark by fox and rabbit or the one that's very similar to paper bark, and I can't remember um, what the other one is that's very similar. But it's it's basically a kind of a cream colour. And I did a bit of a conversion because I wanted mine to be slightly brighter. When I pulled the colours for this, they were very much of a kind of beigey uh, selection. The greens weren't that bright, the reds weren't quite where I wanted them to be, so I did a little bit of a sampler conversion and um that conversion is on one of my floss tubes from january when i finished this right at the end i would imagine so i put 2023 on the top in pink and then i put my initials down there and i picked out this frame which is a lovely wooden frame so you can see it is a wooden frame um and including delivery this was about £45, which I didn't think was too bad, considering it's a nice thick frame and it's over 30 centimetres. It's probably close to 35 centimetres aperture, um, which in my experience of going to framers and asking framers for quotes, a frame of this sort of depth would have been a lot, lot more. So I didn't have any glass put on the front of it. They only offer plexiglass, but I never had any glass put on mine anyway. Um, I prefer them just to be just to be totally open. So I framed that one and I framed another one, which I will share with you next week because I've got more to tell you about the other one. So you can you'll have to wait until then. I've also got to show you some other samplers um, that are in my collection that I've never shown you. Now, why have I never shown you them? You might ask. Probably because. When they arrived, they might have arrived quite in quite proximity to others. And it was just a case of if I show them another sampler that I bought, they'll they'll think I've got a problem. <laughs> um, it goes in fits and starts like that. I won't buy one for a while. And then all of a sudden they're like buses. They come along in threes and fours and fives. Anyway, so I've got those to show you as well. I've got a freebie. I've got a little bit of haul. Um, and I think that's about it. I think that's about it. As you can see, I'm a little bit 
kerfuffle because I've done this once and so I can't, my brain can't differentiate what I did last time and what I did this time. So if there's any glaring errors, do ask questions. Okay, just before I get on with that, I just want to give another shout out. Susan Beckley was the winner of the Ellen Berry sampler PDF from last week. I've heard from the other lady um, and I've passed your details on to, um, oh my goodness me, Ruthie. <laughs> Oh dear, it's one of those days. I've passed your details on to Ruthie so that you'll get your PDF very soon, no doubt. Um, so, Susan Beckley, I'll put your comment back up here from, from last week. Um, please do get in touch with me so that I can get this sent out to you via PDF. Right. The hoard. The samplers that I have been hoarding. There's three of them that I think I haven't shown you. In fact, I know I haven't shown you these three. Whether there are others I haven't shown you, I don't know. So I don't know much about any of these because I haven't really had time to do the um, the research on them. Um, so the first one is in a terrible frame. I've got to remind myself who they are now. This is Mary, I think it's H.A. F or H A S U E R Hauser Hauser could be Hauser. Um, she's got no date on her, and I think she's got really glary glass. So we'll give it a whirl. It's in a terrible frame. There we go. If I try and hold her a bit like that, and let me tell you why I liked this one so much. Lovely border, lovely strawberry border. We've got an alphabet at the oh gosh that's dusty we've got an alphabet at the top we've got her name there is there not a date on this one no but the thing that really attracted me was this kind of garden at the bottom this asymmetric kind of garden with like plants and flowers on this side plants and flowers on this side big flower there but kind of asymmetrical it reminded me of sort of like a garden a garden gate and I really really liked it really liked it um love the crown and the bird in the middle and other than that it says on the back this ready gold frame complicated <laughs> I don't think it's complicated at all I think it's horrible anyway I was hoping for a, a bit more information but there we go so that is Mary I acquired but didn't share who else have I acquired but not shared this one now this is an interesting one and I do know a little bit more about this one because there is some information on the back Think about that stitches think about that when you are stitching your beautiful samplers put some information on the back especially if they're original to you if you've come up with a design and you've stitched it put some information on the back that's what i'm starting to do with mine to put information on the back gives the ladies in the charity shop something to go <laughs> when ness finally goes no i don't want any of this <laughs> so this is oh my gosh that's glary the sampler now, I'm probably going to have to give you a little bit of help with this one because of the glare. So at the top, we've got a row of eyelet alphabets. Then underneath, we've got another alphabet and we've got some numbers. Now, there are two names on this sampler. Sarah Coultus, C-O-U-L. T-O-U-S here. Uh, where is her name? It's in capitals. There. Sarah Coultus. And it says, died June 30th, aged 84 years in 1839. So she died aged 34 in 1839. And then at the bottom, after a um, 
a verse. Now, you know how good I am with verses. It says it on the back. Let me read it from the back. Oh, that I had wings like a dove, then I would swiftly flee away from hence and to a place where, at, where I at rest should be. And then underneath, it says Mary Coultus finished this work in July, uh, 11th of July, 1839. So this was finished in 1839. So what's the story? What's the story, Morning Glory? So on the back, it says, note, Sarah Coultus, born 1755, died 1839. The granddaughter of the above, Mary Coultus, born 1822, died 1869. The top portion of the sampler was worked by Sarah Coultus and finished by her daughter, granddaughter. So, some of this top portion, and I don't know where, was started by the grandmother sometime in the 1700s. I would imagine. So if she was born in 1755, probably we're looking at what, 1770, 1775, maybe. I can check my maths. And then the bottom was finished by her granddaughter. Now, I think, I'm trying to get, that I know where the distinction is and I've never, ever seen this on a sampler before. And it's here. This row of alphabets is backwards. So all of the other sampler alphabets at the top go as you would expect they do, left to right. Here, this row there goes right to left. So the letters go backwards and they're stitched in reverse as well. So not only do we just start with a over here the actual letters themselves are reversed now i can't i've never ever seen anything like it before and i can't think of another reason as to why that would happen if that wasn't the demarcation point between the two stitches i've tried to look and see whether there's any um anything in the stitching that would indicate two different hands um I was hoping that one person did their top stitch in one direction and one in the other direction, but that was too much to hope for. Um, but I think you can definitely see there's a, a faded portion and then a sort of a, a brighter portion. And I think the backwards lettering may be where, um, where that is. If anybody has any other suggestions or knows of any other samplers where there is a backwards row of alphabets and knows the reason for it then I am all ears please please let me know because I've been puzzling over that one um, since I bought her um, probably oh, I don't know time flies could be anywhere from six months to 12 months ago <laughs> I've no idea no idea when I bought her and the third one that I've never shown you is a Welshie um, a lovely Welshie and I actually had this one delivered to school um, sort of to get it past domestic customs uh, and another sampler box arriving um, but also because there are Welsh speakers at school and they all puzzled over this one they all puzzled over this one as to what it actually says and I'll try and explain why now the thing that drew me to this is the fabric the fabric on this I just think is absolutely stunning and when I reproduce it, I want to try and get exactly the colouring of this because I just, is it, no, it's not too reflective actually, I just love this kind of darkened edge, almost like a vignette around the sampler. It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Now, it's stitched by a girl called Rosanna Evans. Her work aged 20 years so she's quite quite old for a sampler stitcher um 1862 i think it is 1862 although the one is missing but i think it's i'm sure it's 1862 now 
trying to find an Evans in Wales. <laughs> you can usually sort of throw a stone out the front door and hit one. Um, I haven't been successful in finding Rosanna Evans, not to the point of exclusion of others. Um, so what have we got? We've got some alphabets at the top, upper and lower case. We've got numbers. We've got eyelets. I really love the colours of this sampler. The peach, the pink, the blue, the green. Beautiful. And in the middle there, we have got some Welsh. Now, what it says is fill one, which is the, um, the book. 21 remember lot's wife so lot's wife was the one who looked back and got turned to a pillar of salt something interesting was going on behind her she had a little look she got turned to a pillar of salt i believe that's the story I'm telling a woman to not have a look good grief but the welsh here they weren't able to work out because we were struggling to read this top bit all the letters run into one another. So I shall be asking my friend, who is the Archdeacon of Carmarthenshire, a Welsh speaker, often gives his sermons in Welsh, um, Dorian Davis. You've probably, in fact, I've asked Dorian before to read a passage on Mary Griffiths, the Welsh sampler Mary Griffiths. Um, and he did me a little video of him reading what the, the Welsh sounds like. Um, so I am going to have to ask him if he can decipher what that what that means, because no doubt it's from Welsh scripture. But the ladies in the office who are all first language Welsh speakers couldn't quite work it out. Um, and again, it's because we couldn't quite read the top bit and because the letters all kind of go into one. So it's harder to work out which is part of one word and which is part of another word. So love that one love 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 that one so that's my confessional that's three samplers that i've never shown you before so how quickly they all come to um reproduction is anyone's guess um i do it to to amuse myself because i love it um and yeah and i want you guys to be able to stitch them too it just takes me just a bit longer to do things when i'm retired when I'm one of these retired teachers, which I'd very much like to be, I'll be banging them out left, right and centre. <laughs> right, freebie. This is from Stone Street Stitchworks. And this is a freebie sampler for Sampler September. Now, I am not going to do a very good job at pronouncing that name. Selma Oya? That would be my guess. But I don't know. Now... I seem to remember that she is Swedish, yeah, and they've got some information inside about what all this wording means here. So you can see her name there. This bit at the bottom means flee sin, so it does have a religious um, uh, aspect to it, and I think... Yeah, this is the name of the school and this is the town or the village that the school is in. So isn't that lovely? Lovely to have a sampler, especially a red sampler, in a different language. Um, so this is free for Sampler September. So if you want to download a copy, go and grab one. I'll put the link in the description box below. So... I think that's beautiful. It is, I should have said, it's not huge. 170 by 135. So go and grab that one. Right, I have got a little bit of haul to show you. Um, not a huge amount, but a little bit. Let's start off with a little bit of a sad tale. I bought this from eBay and now I do like a multiplication sampler. This is from the historical sampler company and when it arrived it looked like the postman had been playing uh, football with it. 
it's definitely got a bit of a, a foot mark on the outside and it, unfortunately it had worn through to the inside and it had got a little bit wet now thankfully the majority of the sampler is not damaged and i can work out most of it um, i think i can work out everything but it's just not quite as easy and it came with a piece of ada which I, i'll not use i'll swap that out and it came with all the thread now i messaged the seller and i explained to him what had happened and i said that i could i could still read the chart and i said but obviously it's not come in the condition that I purchased it in and straight away he refunded my money said just keep it if you can if you can still stitch it then great um, but I'll claim for it on the um, the postal service so there's that one I do have a little selection of multiplication samplers I really do like them but I've not as yet stitched one what else did I get I went to the works something Ness wanted but I picked up a couple of little tombstones for £1.50. Obviously need to be painted, but perfect for little Halloween finishes. And I also picked up a little sort of lightwood balsa coffin because there's two or three designs that you can finish in a sort of a coffin shape. And um, and so I wanted to grab one just oh, just bang the bedpost um, just so that I had one to hand. When I say grab one, I obviously grabbed two and Ness pinched one. So that's that's how life works, isn't it these days? Right. What else have I got here? My fabric of the month came from Chromatic Alchemy. Now I must admit, who's the crinkling? when she sent through the preview i wasn't necessarily that enamored with this fabric and i really did think i might cancel it and then i didn't i changed my mind and i was it's only my second one and i thought no I, I need to see kind of more from them as a fabric company before i sort of go on a picture to to say whether i want something or not which sounds really weird to say but i think you know what i'm saying so i get a 32 count and it arrived and oh my goodness me oh my goodness me it's blowing out a little bit but it's kind of purples that's actually pretty good there purples and teal greens and turquoise greens aqua greens i love it and i'm so pleased that i didn't um refuse this one because what you can do is when you um join their fabric club she sends you through a preview of what the fabric is going to be like and you can skip a fabric if you want to i don't think you're allowed to skip more than two in a certain period or two more than two consecutively um and still keep your place but i'm really glad now that i've seen it that i didn't um i didn't cancel it because I am thinking that it may be the perfect fabric for this. I've hummed and hard about what fabric to do this on, which is the Greenhouse of Oddities cell. Now this is finished now and it's been um, completed. I might see if I can find a picture to put up, but I love this and I'm, I'm annoyed with myself. That I didn't have the courage of my convictions to start it when it came out um it's by lola crow and i should have known better i should have known that this was going to be fabulous and i was like oh, i'll wait and see i'll just wait and see and now it's completely finished and i and i need to get going on it because it's lovely so yeah i thought that might be a really interesting fabric to stitch it on i'm sure i've seen someone stitch it on a similar color and it looked amazing I ordered a few threads from Patchwork Rabbit. Try not to ruin Carla and Catherine's uh, display. So I've got some DMC. And when they arrived, Chris said, what are they for? I was like, I have not got a clue. <laughs> not got a clue. I really should utilise the box that they have at the end, which says either to leave them a note or to leave yourself a note. So 
but I think it's for when I was going back through my floss tube pile I think it's for some of the charts that I showed you last week so the blue flower um Halloween one and the cabin one and then there is the fancy floss as well now one of the things that's in here that I definitely know is that it yeah is a gentle art wool in black and it is for this I am going to use the wool to try and give me those thicker um, threads I thought about just saying I'm going to try doing just like two strands of DMC and then one strand of DMC or one strand of something even thinner like 103 um, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and use the wool and see if that gives me the look this one's going to take a little bit of trial and error I think to get that get that lace look and then what else did I get went into town uh Carmarthen, probably would help you if I said which town after school on Friday and I was just walking past the charity shop on my way to somewhere else and I saw these in the window and I was like I'm gonna grab them now I love a flower frog they make great scissor holders so just in case you that's a terrible pair of scissors I need a smaller pair there we go little scissors there we go they make great little scissor holders get it in the bigger one there we go so I found this really really tiny one which I quite thought would be marked but I can't see the markings on it so I found that really really tiny one now I might actually use this for pins because as you've seen seen they the scissors don't go in very far on this one so I might actually use this for pins for when we make pins to go in the top of drums I may use it for that but this one definitely will I've never seen one like this before so it's got a swirl of blue and white glass now I have had a little idea that what I might do is keep my eye out for these and try and put together a little collection um, that I might put on my Etsy shop closer to Christmas because they make fabulous gifts for stitchers. So these seem to come up reasonably regularly um, around and about my area, whereas I've had people say they can't find them <laughs> in their area. So, yeah, I may start trying to collect up a few just to offer a little collection closer to Christmas if you can prize them out of my hands. <laughs> <laughs> There's only so many flower frogs that one woman needs. I'm not sure I'm at capacity yet, but my brain is telling me I probably should be. But hey, whoever said this hobby was logical, right? <laughs> anyway, I think I've got there in the end. Apologies for the abject chaos at the beginning. Um, but anyway, I shall see you next week. Stay classy, Stitchers.